Hi, welcome to this tutorial, another in my series on correlation and regression. And in this tutorial what we're going to look at is something called the product moment correlation coefficient. And the symbol that we use for that statistic is R. Now, if you had some bivariate data, okay, that's two variables, and let's call them X and Y, and you had them in a table, okay, now I know I've just done dots here, just imagine that there were particular numbers all across here in both these rows. If you were to draw a scatter diagram for these particular values, it could be that that data came out in a line, a line that was going downwards, okay? And if it came out in a perfect line, we would say it's got perfect negative linear correlation. It might be that that data, when plotted, came out in a perfect line going upwards. And if it did, we would say it's got perfect positive linear correlation. Linear meaning it's in a straight line. Now suppose though that we were to plot the data and we found out that those points came out though a bit scattered, something like this, okay? And there was clearly some kind of negative linear correlation going on, okay? Not quite in a perfect line, but just scattered about a line. Or they were going upwards, scattered about some kind of line, okay? Something like that. Then we would say that this is fairly close to positive linear correlation, and this is fairly close to negative linear correlation. But if we had something like this, a scatter diagram, where the points just were nowhere near a line, okay? It was hard to tell if there was any relationship going on. Then what we do is we design this statistic R, the product moment correlation coefficient, to go from minus 1 at this particular end, perfect negative linear correlation, right the way through to R equals 1 here, perfect positive linear correlation. And in the middle here, where we've got no linear correlation at all, no correlation whatsoever, R would equal 0. And for as for these two graphs here, this one would be a value somewhere between 0 and 1. And the closer that these data values got to a straight line, the closer our value of R would be to 1. So it might be 0 0.85 or 0 0.9, say, something like that. And similarly, for this one here, we would have a value of R between 0 and minus 1, something like R equals minus 0 0.85, say. So our statistic R, the product moment correlation coefficient, always is designed to work out a value somewhere between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. Now how do we work out this value of R? Well it can be shown that R is equal to SXY, and I'll explain what SXY is in a moment, divided by the square root of SXX times SYY. So what are these values of SXY, SXX and SYY? Well, SXY is a statistic that we use where we do the sum of X times Y. That is, in a table like this, we would multiply each X value with the Y value and add them all up. And we get this total here, sigma xy, the sum of all the xy values. I'll be doing an example in a moment to show you how this works. But then we minus the sum of all the x values times the sum of all the y values, and we divide by how many observations we've got, n. How many of these 
columns here that we've got. Okay. Now when it comes to SXX, it's very similar. For SXX, all we're doing is replacing the Y that you have here with an X. So here we have sigma, the sum of X times X, or sigma X squared. And here, instead of having sigma Y, we have sigma X. So we've got sigma X times another sigma X. So that's going to be minus sigma X all squared. And that will be divided by N. Sigma x, by the way, all squared is not the same as sigma x squared, as you'll see later. We also have got this one here, SYY. What do you think that's going to be? Well, all we're going to do is replace all the x's with y's. So we're going to have sigma yy, sigma y squared. Sigma y squared minus sigma y times sigma y, in other words, sigma y all squared. And that's divided by the number of observations n. All right? So it's very important that you try and learn these and our formula here, okay? Quite often, though, you'll find that in a formula book that you might be given for an exam, you'll find generally these formulas around. Okay? Now I did say we'll have a look at an example. Now suppose I have a table like this one, the marks in two tests. We've got maths marks were X and physics marks Y for quite a number of students. In fact, 10 students if you were to count these up. Okay? Now if we were to try and work out the product moment correlation coefficient. Remember our formula for that. It was r equals sxy all over the square root of sxx, syy. And we have what sxy, sxx and syy were. So if I was doing this, I've got to start working out some of these statistics. Sigma x, for instance. Okay. So if I'm doing sigma x, what I need to do okay, is just add up all the values across here. And so if we do sigma x and you add them all up, you should find that sigma x comes to 71. Just 4 plus 5 plus 5 and so on, all the way up to the 10. So that would be that statistic in there, sum of x. We're going to need to work out sigma y. So it add up all the y values in there. And if we do that, you'll be given sigma y comes to 77. What else are we going to need? We're going to need to add up the squares of all the x values. So in other words, we need to start a new line. We need to square all the x values. And if you do that, you're going to get an x squared here. We're going to have 4 squared, that would be 16, 5 squared, 25, and so on. So you could fill a row like that in. And if you did that, you'd find that would be your row. And if you added all those up, you'd have sigma x squared. Sigma x squared comes to 545. Just add that up. So, we've got that statistic there. What else do we need? Sigma y squared. So we need to work out what all the y squareds are going to be. So we're going to have 6 squared is 36, 36 there, 49 and so on. And if you do that, that's what you'll have. And we need to add those up, get sigma y squared. So if we add them up, sigma y squared comes to 609. We also need sigma xy. So we need to work out what x times y is going to be. So 4 times 6, 24. 5, 6 is 30 and so on all the way through. If we do that, there you go. We can add them up and we get sigma xy, which equals 571. Now quite often this takes a bit of time to do. 
And so you'll quite often find in questions that they will give you these values here, which are often called summary statistics. So look out for that and it will save you having to do all of these calculations in here. Now that we've got that, okay, we can start to work out what SXY is. So SXY is going to be, according to the formula, sum of XY, there you go, 571, minus sum of X times sum of Y, sum of X times sum of Y, 71 times 77, divided by n, the number of observations, which is going to be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? And work that out on your calculator, and you should find you get 24.3. Now, I'll leave it up to you just to work out what SXX is and SYY are. Okay? So you might like to pause the video if you just want to try and work those out. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. And SXX, how did you get on with that? Well, let's just see what you should have. You should have 40.9. SYY, well that comes out at 16.1. So when it comes to working out R, the product moment correlation coefficient, if you do this sum, SXY, all divided by the square root of SXX, SYY, you might like to try that. Okay, just pause the video, see what you get. Okay, welcome back if you had a go at that one. Okay, so you should find that you get R equals 0.95 to two decimal places. Remember that R comes out between, or should come out between, minus one and one, inclusive, okay? If you get a value outside that range, you know you would have made a mistake. Okay. Now, the interesting thing here is, what does 0.95 suggest to you? If we were to plot this scatter diagram. Well, do you remember that if R is close to positive 1, it would mean that our scattered diagram would be a set of points that were close to a line which was increasing. Okay. Not a perfect line, it would be one if it was, okay? Well, let's just go ahead and just see what the scatter diagram would look like. Well, if we had a grid and then we put the points on, okay, this is what we would get. You also notice you don't have to start your X values at naught or your Y values at naught. You can start them wherever you like. I've chosen three. It starts here at four, but three is adequate. The y values start at 6, so I just chose 4. And I've plot plotted those values on. 4, 6, 4, 6, you can see 4 across, 6 up, and so on. And notice how they are fairly close to a linear fit, a positive linear fit. Our value, 0.95, suggests this. All right. So I hope that's given you some idea of how to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient R and how we can interpret its value as it should lie between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. All right? Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial and thank you very much for listening.